Okay guys, this GPX took so much work to get all the suspension done uh, that I had to end up making two videos about the suspension. One on the forks and one on the shock. I was trying to do it all together, <clears throat> but it was just going to be forever long. So anyway, here is the shock video now. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, think about subscribing. That'd be super cool. Um, yeah, let's get after it. It is time to work on the shock absorber. As we can see, it is a very strong shock absorber. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. I'm going to set you guys down. We're going to take it apart and see what's inside. All right, this is interesting. So it's got a little Allen here. I'm going to find out what happens when we open this up. So nothing happens. That means there's maybe no nitrogen in there. Okay, that's all right. I don't really know how we're gonna fill that thing because I don't have, I don't know. We're gonna figure it out. So now we gotta get the spring off of it. like the owner of this thing put a ton of preload on it might have had something to do with the fact that there's no nitrogen all right guys so this is an interesting conundrum they've made this so tall that now I think I'm gonna have to pull down on this a whole bunch to slide that off. off. <sighs> Alright guys. Got it off. Uh, had to use the uh, vise. Or not the vise, excuse me. I had to use the press to compress a spring. And, uh, and get it off. It's just, that's aggravating. Uh, when one tiny little difference there, all you really need instead of this huge thing is a circlip. Like on. Anyway. <sighs> Alright, next. What are we gonna find now? My guess is more ridiculousness. Might be wrong about this. It might be a neat old style anyway. Let's see. Holy. I'm not sure what's going on in there, but. Take. Take this bleed screw out. Oh, there we go. That's what this is the pressure. That's unfortunate. i clean the camera off now. <laughs> All right, guys, after that explosion, uh, we got everything apart. Uh, there's no way I'm going to have a seal for this. That's unfortunate. I don't even know. I don't know. We're going to take it apart, though. Why not keep going, right? I don't know. I'm over it. <laughs> Honestly, this is ridiculous. 
So guys, here's an interesting thing. I don't know what to do. I mean, this should be the nut that would take it apart, but then this looks like a, some sort of thing. But I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna try taking this off. We'll go real slow. Hopefully we won't mess anything up. Actually, I might put a wrench on that first, see if it turns. If it doesn't, then we'll try this. This is the stuff I don't like about these weird off brands. Is they don't build anything like anyone else. So you're just guessing at stuff. Um, unless you've done it before. And that's fine, I guess. If you're a dealer, I guess you'd better have done it before. But I don't know. I've done a lot of shocks. I've never seen anything like this. It's probably not a big deal. Probably going to come off no problem. But anyway. Ten. Okay, so that's turning. That's that. Not sure what that is. All right, now for the big nut. Let's see. Look at that. It's not a 17, and it's not a 19. So that means uh, we're gonna use an 18. It means it's some American thing. Ah. Uh, We'll heat her up a little bit, I guess. See how that does. There we go. Well, that's actually a good thing. At least they put enough Loctite on it. So it's not gonna come apart. All right, I'm gonna take a zip tie this time so I, I might have to leave this thing apart for a while while I wait for a seal or find a seal. Zip tie that up so it can't come apart. All right, now we find out. All right, we got the bumper out. Let's see, washer, and now the seal. I don't think I have anything like that, but we're gonna look. Ooh, 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 maybe. Ooh, that might be. Aha! Uh Haha! -huh. <laughs> yeah! Holy crap, that's crazy. So, this is like a dust seal, so I can't. I'm not gonna try to replace that. I don't have one anyway. But I think that's gonna work, so. That is seriously crazy. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. I'll be right back. Alright. Got it all cleaned up. Now we're gonna see if it fits. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Winning! I'm so excited! Oh, I really thought this thing was gonna be in pieces forever. There we go. We'll go super easy. We'll get some grease on it. There we go. Alright. Alright. Now we got our stack to put back on. All right, so now gotta clean these threads really, really well. Clean these threads really, really well. And then we'll lock tight them. Put this back in, whatever the heck this is, with some Loctite, because it had some on it. 
Always want to make sure you clean all that Loctite off of there, off the outside, so that it doesn't go through and get in the shims. Let me show you this. So, this is obviously has a cutout, so you can use different ones. That's another cheapy thing I don't like that much. Yeah. So... I also don't like these bands that are split like that anyway. I like the ones that just go around it. I don't have any new ones, so I'm going to have to take a little bit of grease and that will hold it on as we slide it together. Alright guys, now i got to figure out what's inside here because I seriously have no clue. Hopefully that'll work, but now I just gotta gotta get that loose. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not sure what's in there or how to fill it with anything, so let's heat her up. Let's get her warm. has got a piston like a KTM and I don't know a rubber ball or what but it's like a check valve so I think that's a rubber ball And it's got oil on the wrong side of it, so I'm going to clean it up really good, see if we can't get that to seal better. Pretty excited about what I just found out. So this is one of the Racetech um, shock bolts that has the rubber, you know, so you can fill it with the needle, like that. And it's too big, which is good, for it to go into this hole. Um, I think, I think it's too big. Yeah, anyway, so... I have the right size tap, so what we're going to do is we're going to drill that hole out. We're going to take this out. I don't know even what's in there, but... So, it's like a rubber ball. I think the idea is that you could put the needle through it, but the problem is it kept rolling around and wanting to go to the side, so that's not going to work. That's okay, because we have the solution. So, take this out, chalk this up. All right, so it looks like a 5.30 seconds drill bit. Now, tap it, tap, tap, tap. When you're tapping holes, guys, make sure you just back it out every now and then and uh, clean the threads out. Because if you get those chips in there, you can bind this thing up and then you'll snap, like, especially these tiny little tabs, snap it off in there and then you're sad. The last thing that we need to address is the fact that this recess is uh, too small for the head of this. It won't fit down in to seal up. Um, that's okay. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this lovely Matco uh, 3 8 drill bit. Um, now it won't work direct because that taper, we're going to cut her off flat. Guys, well, that's what we did to it. We basically made our own custom end mill, which 
It's gonna be interesting to try to get it super straight, but I think it's all right. We'll be close enough. And then uh, we can get it to seal. I am really happy with that. That turned out really well. Um, there we go. It's not perfectly smooth, but that's why it comes with this O-ring. So, <laughs> I am stoked. Where there's a will, there's a way, people. Should fit right down in there. Yeah! Yes! Dude, okay. That's awesome. Anybody with a GPX, let me know. We can fix you up. That's seriously so cool. All right. So now we are going to bleed this thing in an old school manner. Mainly because uh, I don't have, there's not a big port here to, um, to use my bleed cups. So we're just going to put that back in. Oh, nice. No, we're not. All right, you gotta figure that out. All right, guys, so that hole stripped, like, instantly. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, so we're gonna have to do something else creative with that, too. So let me go find, hopefully, a bolt that will work in there. All right, so I found an Allen that's gonna work. I think it's gonna work guys. I have to clean that out really well, but perfect. Now I gotta make the head just a little smaller on that Allen because my little end mill thing that I built for the other one is not gonna work so because it's too well maybe I don't know. Let's take a look. I think it's too tight, but Ooh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Another win. We made it bigger. That's crazy. Now we gotta get an O-ring for this. I'm gonna pop that piston out of there. That's interesting. Now I'm going to clean this out really good. Now, like I said, I need an O-ring for this guy. Now, I'm not going to cut it off because that thing needs, that piston needs to be down a ways anyway. So we're just going to put it in there. I'm going to put a little Loctite on it though. I'm gonna go easy on that because it seems like all the aluminum on these things is uh, a little on the eh side. So, shock fluid. Make sure we open up the valves. Take our piston, we're gonna drop down here. We're gonna have to be really careful with this band. There we go. Just gonna pump it up and down till we get all the bubbles out. All right, let me show you something. So as you, as we push down, you'll see the piston come up, and if we lift up, we see the piston go down. 
But if we go slow up, the piston stays where it is. So if you go, I like to go nice and easy so it doesn't drive it down. And then I do it like that, and then I'll push the piston, and that'll push fluid back up through here and hopefully any air. And there's a bunch of bubbles just came out. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna turn you guys off. So all the air's out, I'll put it back together and then we'll charge it up. All right guys, got all the air out. Now we're gonna push this piston down until you see that little groove. Take our wire clip. that's good now I'm gonna take our cap and in taking this out it somehow managed to kind of jack up some threads I hope not too bad uh, but what we're gonna do is gonna take some Loctite on this we're gonna clean it really good get it dry same with the threads in there some red Loctite and go really easy on the install here and use that Loctite as some lube too because it does lube until it sets up. And hopefully, it doesn't mess those threads up. Whew. All right, guys, now all that's left to do. Well, we gotta install it and who knows how that's gonna go, but we'll try charging it and then test it. All right, here we go. Let's see if anything goes crazy. All right. Now for the test. What we'll do is we're going to push down on it. Comes up nice and smooth. So let's check it again. We said you want to push down, and then when you lift up, you want it to come up. Nice and smooth. Perfect. Just like that. So, against all odds, guys, we got this thing done. I can't believe it, honestly. Um, I'm going to finish cleaning it all up. Struggle to get the spring back on there. We'll put it back on, and then I'm going to show you some more stuff over there. All right, guys, so got the shock all mounted up. Um, seems to be good. So, <laughs> i got to show you something else about this. Uh, and hello, Dirt. I love you, dude. Um, and I'm stoked that you like this bike. I'm stoked that you're getting along well with it. Uh, it really does mean a lot. And I really do want to see a company like this do well um, and make bikes that are reasonably priced because $10,000 is just too much for a new dirt bike. But um, it has, uh, it even has an aftermarket Chinese uh, Electron style carburetor, which actually doesn't look bad at all, really. It's all billet aluminum body and stuff. But it doesn't fit into the boot, it's too small, so it had this on it that was then taped around there, which I'm gonna have to do again. <laughs> I hate doing stuff like that. Um, but, you know, whatever, it is what it is. I guess it wasn't leaking, I don't know, the motor seems, he says the motor seems strong. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, here's another interesting design feature it's got this rc uh, power valve which isn't new or um whatever it's just old school tech um, but it's pretty old school like this is all exposed and dirty and oh uh, uh, you know the the head the uh, bolts on instead of just sliding on like normal two-stroke uh oh and sorry guys I, I said before it was a 300 it's a 250 i anyway um they only make a 250 they don't make a 300 it's basically an old WR uh, Yamaha motor, but it's not made by Yamaha. It's made by these guys, um, so it's not 
in my experience, not just Yamaha parts don't just bolt onto it or into it or anything like that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but a lot of these knockoff things, it's like you got to buy it from them. Now, I hear the GPX. Um, I've been getting all kinds of comments on uh, Instagram about this bike because I've put some pictures up, but uh, uh, even from GPX, and they swear, and everybody else swears that they can get parts really fast. So that's cool. If that's true, that's awesome. I really like that. Um, but I'm going to stick to my name brands. My belief is that for 5700 bucks, you could definitely buy a really nice used mainstream bike. Um, but if you don't want mainstream, you want to do something different, here you go. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to finish putting this thing back together. I don't think I'm going to take it for a ride. I'm kind of scared of something breaking on it. So I'll get it ready, make sure the suspension works, and then we'll be good to go. All right, guys. Got the GPX all done. Uh, suspension's working great. Got the carburetor all sorted out, so it's good to go. I uh, talked to uh, Jared, and he is fired up. He's going to come pick it up uh, next week. So anyway, guys, I love you so much. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas with family and friends, and you got to hang out and spend really good quality time with those folks. As always, I hope you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels, and I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on and get out and ride your dirt bikes!